Good morning, and welcome to worship. Um, Althea, uh, unfortunately, has uh, had an exposure at her uh, place of employment, so she is not with us this morning. She was advised to, to quarantine at this time, so we want to pray for her and her husband and all of those who may have been affected and just pray for the best for for them and that they stay healthy. Um, as we look at our announcements for this week, there are again a number of them. Just a reminder, as you may have noticed, there is the barrel in the entrance or the narthex, the We Can, We Care donation barrel. And you are invited to bring any non-perishable items. You can bring them with you to worship over the next couple of Sundays or drop any of them by any time during the week and place them in the barrel as you come in. Bible study will continue on Tuesday morning as well as Wednesday evening. Uh, the trustees will be this week on Wednesday evening as well as the Christian Education Committee. Uh, and then confirmation, we'll plan to meet back in person hopefully next Sunday at 2 in the afternoon. Are there any announcements any of you have this morning before we begin? Okay. Uh, if not, I would uh, invite Tom and Sandy to come forward who will share with us in the lighting of our Anvet wreath. two verses of hymn number 2090 in the Faith We Sing songbook.
join with me in our call to worship. Lord, you were favorable to your land. You forgave the iniquity of your people. Righteousness will go before him. Let us join our hymn of praise, the first four verses of hymn number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You may be seated. And at this time, I invite any of our children to come forward. And before we sit down, if you just stand right here for a moment. Now, I know a few of you were here last week. Remember what we talked about last week? Look around and see if you see something different. Do you see anything different? What do you see? They're a little closer, aren't they? If you weren't here last week, Mary and Joseph, you'll see right there in the back there by the one window there, you'll see them. Last week, they were further in the back. And you see this week, they're a little closer. And then next week when you're here, they're going to be even closer. And then in two weeks, they're going to be almost up front here. But they're slowly making their journey up front. And again, the reason why we're doing that is to symbolize 
their journey that they're making to Bethlehem. Because what happens in Bethlehem? What happens in Bethlehem? Baby Jesus was born. born. Exactly. So just be watching and then come back next week and you're going to see him a little closer. So if you guys want to go ahead and have a seat for a moment. Now, I thought we'd have something a little different for our treats this morning. Um, I, I thought we'd try something different because uh, I, I got to show you, this is pretty good stuff. I've tried it before and it, it actually tastes pretty good. Yeah, um, what, what, what we're going to do is um, instead of having our usual candy, I thought we'd have some of this. What's in this? What's this? Honey. honey. It's honey. What do we use honey for? What do we use it for? Milk. For what? Milk. We could, we could. What else? When you have a cold. When you have a cold, yeah, it's good to put in like hot tea or even just hot water and maybe add a little lemon juice. Sometimes for breakfast, sometimes we like to put it on toast, but it, it's, it's kind of a natural sweetener. And we use it to kind of give a little sweetness. Now, what I think we're going to try here is I thought, and I'll just show you a picture, but I thought we'd have honey-covered locusts. Would you like to try that? <laughs> would you like to try some honey-covered locusts? Well, what would you think of me if I told you I ate these every morning for breakfast? You can be honest. Would you think I'd, I'm a little weird, aren't I? You'd, you'd, yeah, you'd agree. Well, that's okay. Well, I assure you, we are not going to have honey-covered locusts here for our treat. You'll get your regular treat here in a second. But the reason why I, I, I brought this in front of you is in a little bit, I'm going to read a story from the Gospel of Mark. And Mark, it, right from the very beginning, talks about a certain person who comes before Jesus. And his name is John. They call him John the Baptist. The reason why they called John the Baptist was because he was baptizing everybody in the Jordan River. John was a little weird, and that's one thing he ate. He liked to eat honey-covered locusts. Would you try that? Yeah, I didn't think so. I don't know if I would either, but John, John was a little different. He was kind of a little weird, and he also wore a shirt made out of camel's hair. Can you imagine that? That'd be kind of a weird shirt to wear, wouldn't it? Imagine wearing a shirt that's just covered with camel hair. Well, he was a little different, but he's baptizing everybody. And he's talking about the, the need to, to be forgiven and to reach out to God for forgiveness. But as he's baptizing everybody, he's saying something, though. And what he says is this. See, a lot of people that came to John to be baptized they thought he was the Messiah. They actually thought he was Jesus' son, or God's son, Jesus. They actually thought he was the one. But John tells them as he's baptized, and he says, no, I'm not he. I'm not the one that, that you're, you're waiting for. For that person is much greater than me, and he is coming. And he says, I baptize you in water. But this person will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And he's talking about Jesus. And so today's lesson is just about like, like, like you know, the other message we heard last week. Is that, that when Advent, which is we're in right now, means we prepare for Jesus' coming birth. And that means having anticipation. Now again, last week we talked about Christmas presents. Can you imagine you know, having a Christmas present. Do any of you have any Christmas presents under the tree yet? Have you noticed? Have you noticed? I bet you, and I bet you can't wait to open your presents, can you? No, I, it, it, that's part of Christmas. And it's that, you know, that part where you can't wait? You know what that's called? It's called anticipation. That means it, it's that you're excited, that you can't wait to open your presents. And my hope is, is for all of you, is that not only, no matter what and how many presents and how big or small they are under the tree, my hope for all of you is that you can share or have some of that same excitement over Jesus and preparing that it's his birthday we're, we're waiting for. 
And so my hope for you is that you share some of that excitement with others. Because you see, that's what John the Baptist did. As he, as he baptized people, he, 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 he yelled at them and screamed, not angrily, but he wanted to know all about Jesus who would be coming soon. And so that's our hope as we continue in Advent. And you see today we lit two candles. Next week we'll light three. And in two weeks we'll light all four candles. As we wait in Advent for Christmas to come, my hope for all of you is that you share some of that joy like John the Baptist. And you let others know who Jesus is. And you know one of the best ways you can share who Jesus is? isn't just by telling others who Jesus is, but by showing who Jesus is. And we do that when we're, we, we share kindness to one another, when we're kind to one another. You know, I have a little friend um, I heard from this week. She's a little girl. She's about three years old. Her name is Emma. She's a daughter of a real good friend of mine. And Emma called me the other day on the phone because she had to tell me about something Last year for Christmas, I sent her this little stuffed green dinosaur for Christmas. Well, she had to tell me the, the other day that she went to school and she took her little dinosaur as show and tell. And when she got done, when she came home that day, her dad went to pick her up and he noticed she didn't have that little dinosaur with her. And he said, Emma, what'd you do with your dinosaur? Did you forget it? You know what she told her dad? She said, no, there was a little girl named Nancy who was really sad today, and I thought she could be cheered up, so I gave her my dinosaur. So you see, Emma showed the joy of, of, of what it means to wait for Jesus. And we show how Jesus loves us when we show love to one another. So my hope for you is you can be like my friend Emma and share some of that joy that comes with Jesus with others. You don't necessarily have to give them a stuffed animal, but sometimes it means just being kind, saying hello to a stranger, holding the door for someone, or eating or offering somebody a honey-covered locust, whatever you want to do. <laughs> but that's the way we share Jesus' joy is when we show love to one another. Will you join with me in our prayer? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, whether we eat honey-covered locusts or not, we know that you love us. As we wait to celebrate your birth, help us to share your love with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, thank you all. And here's your treats then. It's not honey covered locust, I assure you. It's. Thank you. You bet. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. And again, just as a reminder, offering plates are placed at the back, and there's an offering plate over here for you to place your offerings. Um, also, Julie, as a reminder, wants to make everybody un or know that, of course, if you want to give an offering to count for this year, to make sure you have it into uh, the church by the 31st at the month, then, at the end of the month. I invite you at this time, will you please stand and will you join with me in our offertory prayer? Almighty God, as John the Baptist identified the arrival of the Messiah, this Advent season that role falls on us. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you, we pray that our giving continues to point to the Christ who comes in love and compassion with more concern for those who don't have enough and little concern for those. May our giving in this season reflect our hope for a new kind of kingdom to reign in our world. We pray this in the name of the Messiah, Jesus our Savior, amen. You may be seated. 
and we've come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. What joys or concerns do you have this morning? Yes, Sandy. Oh, <laughs> well, my pleasure. I, I, I just, uh, ever in my earlier years of being a pastor, I realized I just don't have the voice and the, the, the courage to lead people a cappella, and so I just kind of learned to play, and uh, it, it's, been, it, it's been a great help in those times that your organist calls in sick or something. <laughs> but thank you. Are there other uh, joys or concerns? Yes, Tom. <laughs> yes, for my own safety, I will not tell you. She will be celebrating her birthday this next week. I will be 70. Well, happy birthday, Sandy. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Are there any other joys or, or concerns? We, of course, want to remember the, the folks whose names appear there in the bulletin um, for all of them. Of course, for all of those affected by COVID, of course, we want to keep Althea and all the folks at the bank in our thoughts and prayers for this week. And we'll just hope that, uh, that the exposure has been minimum and none of them um, get sick. Um, but let's, let's join together in this, our time of prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious and loving God, we thank you again for this time as we come together here in your house for all of the wonderful blessings you have given us. Lord, we thank you that uh, this season of Advent is a time to help us prepare for your coming birth. Lord, this is a year unlike we've ever seen but help us to know and, 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 and be appreciative of all of the blessings you give us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we, we have not always followed your word. We have become selfish at times. We have strayed from you and from one another, and we come before you humbly asking for your forgiveness. Have mercy on us, O oh God. Forgive us of our waywardness. Help us to know of your love and grace so that we may live lives that are dead to sin and made alive to all that is good. And help us, O oh God, to be the ends of your church, proclaiming your gospel of forgiveness, of mercy, and of love and help us that we too may forgive others who may have wronged us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, we pray for those who are ill or hospitalized or recovering. We lift up so many, O oh God, this week and just ask for your prayers of healing and of wholeness. Be especially with those affected by COVID, and God, just continue to be with those who tend to their care, our healthcare workers, our doctors and nurses, and so many others who are on the front lines of this pandemic, God. Give them strength during this difficult time, Lord, in your mercy. And loving God, we lift up those who are, who are grieving in the loss of loved ones. There have been many in our community, and we lift all of them up. And we lift up those who, who are in the final moments of their life, and we just pray for their comfort and peace. And we, we lift up Lucille, oh God, and just ask that you continue to give her comfort and peace, God. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Loving God, again, this has been a, a year like none other. And we continue to be filled with anxiety. We continue to be filled with questions. What will Christmas be like? Will we get together with family or not? And God, these questions and this anxiety that we, we have has led to so much division, has led to disagreements and uh, 
Do we gather for Christmas? Do we not? And God, we just pray again for your spirit of wholeness, of healing and comfort, that we may work through our differences and be your people and know again that, that no pandemic will have the final say, that you, O oh God, are, are our God who reigns over us, and it is your love and light that will triumph in the end. Lord, in your mercy. And loving God, we lift up those men and women who serve in the military, who especially are in faraway places, away from family, loved ones, and their communities. And we just ask for, for your blessing upon all of them. Lord, in your mercy. For all of these concerns that have been raised here aloud and for others that remain yet in our hearts and in our minds, we ask that you would hear and receive them all. And now, with the confidence as children of God, together let us pray the prayer that Jesus himself taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in Our Old Testament reading for this morning is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid that she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say it to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom 
and gently lead the mother's sheep. Our first New Testament reading for this morning is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish, and regarding patience of our Lord as salvation. So also your beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. A reading now from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending you a messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. May Almighty God bless to our hearts and minds this and understanding of God's holy word. This is the word of the Lord. And you may remain seated as we join in singing the last three verses of O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
And will you please pray for me as I pray for you as we think and reflect upon our scripture passages together. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and may the meditation in all of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our refuge, a very present help in trouble. Amen. Well, for any of you who... Um, any of you who have ever been to uh, a music concert of any sort, usually regardless of the genre, whether it's rock or, or pop music or country or whatever it might be, there is usually preceding the main act or main feature or musician, there is usually a band or someone who serves us the opening act. And that person or band is, is someone who's usually uh, lesser known, but, but their job is to kind of come out and, and, if you will, warm up the audience, to kind of get the energy flowing. And so their job is to come out and perform for a half hour or full hour, whatever the case may be, but that's sort of their job is to get the crowd warmed up and get their energy going. So that the energy is there when the main act comes out on stage, that the crowd is ready for their performance. Rarely is there an opening act who, who sort of overtakes or, or, or is more known or more popular than the, the, the main act. And if that happens, it, 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 it can be an interesting uh, situation uh, of what, what, what could, could go on. But that's kind of the, the situation, if you will, what we have this morning when we hear this reading from the Gospel of Mark. We hear this reading where, again, it opens up, Mark opens up with those very words that we heard from Isaiah this morning in chapter 40 about making, making way, making a pathway straight for the Lord our God. Mark starts with those words, and then he starts talking about this one man. This one man named John, or John the Baptist, as we come to know him. And he talks, the writer talks about John as being one who's out there, and he is baptizing people in the Jordan River. People are coming to him, and he is, 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 is talking, actually shouting about the need for repentance. He, he's talking about the, the, that, that need to, to repent, to know that, that you are to be, you can be forgiven, but also to know the joy that is coming from God. Now, as many gathered and, 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 and met to be baptized by John, as I was sharing with the kids this morning, I'm sure many of them that came to be baptized or just met John probably couldn't help but just notice how eccentric he was. He wore, as we heard, a, a, a camel shirt made of camel, or a shirt made of camel hair, and he ate wild locusts and honey even by the standards back then, that, that, that was considered a little strange. And so John was, was kind of out there. But he's out there and he's shouting about this, this one that is coming. And, and some are saying, well, you're him. You're the one out here, uh, you know, you're talking about repentance and you're baptizing us. You must be him. You must be the one that Isaiah and the rest that Scripture tells us to prepare for. You must be him. And John says, no, I, I am not he. I am not the one that you are waiting for. For that one is coming, and he will be even greater than me. I am not even worthy to untie his sandal. And he tells him, you know, I am baptizing you in water. I am baptizing you in, in water that you may be brought into the start of a new life. But this one who's coming after me, this greater one, 
He is going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So you can imagine the, the sort of message that John is, is, is proclaiming out there. He's, he's really shouting, and as I said, just seems kind of eccentric in the way he, he, he presents himself to others. And I'm sure there were a few others who looked at him and thought, uh, you're, you're a bit strange, but needless to say, he keeps talking that there's someone greater. Now, I admit is a time that we hear of these different readings and we'll hear them over the next few weeks and we'll hear them on Christmas Eve about angels. About angels who appear, the one the angel, Gabriel, who appeared, of course, to Mary. And we hear of how the angels appeared before the shepherds and out in the fields that there was a great light and a voice that spoke to them. And there was also the angels that guided the three wise men. And when we think of those encounters, we almost think in a way kind of a, a serene setting, if you will, that when, when Gabriel first spoke to Mary, we, we picture the encounter as, as sort of a, a, a sort of a gentle encounter where this voice, and this angel presents himself to Mary. And then he tells her that she will bear a son and that she will name him Jesus. But most amazingly, he tells her she will remain a virgin in all of this and that this son will be the Savior, that this son is God's own son that she will bear into the world. And of course, she can't believe it at first. And, 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 and the words that the angel say to, says to her, it's kind of frightening. Same way with the shepherds when they were out in their fields and the angels appeared to them and told them about Jesus' birth. They were filled with fear too. But those angels asked that those shepherds go to the Christ child himself. And there were the three wise men who were guided by the angel too, that, that again, we think of sort of these serene settings, if you will. And no matter how serene or how calm those encounters may have been when we contrast them with, with, with John's encounters with people at the Jordan, whether it's, it's in those kind of gentle encounters with those angels or it's an encounter with John at the Jordan River who's splashing around and shouting at people and telling them they need to repent. They're all, they're all stories of angels encountering others giving them some news that's uncomfortable and asking them to do things that may, they may not necessarily want to do. We may not think or see John the Baptist as an angel, but nevertheless, that, that's sort of what he is. He preaches the need for, uh, for repentance. Despite his, his eccentricities of wearing a camel hell shirt and, 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 and eating wild locusts with honey. You know, I once saw a, a cartoon once and a little humor, and uh, it, it talked about John the Baptist, and, uh, but, but in, the, in the cartoon, it had him wearing a cowboy hat, and he was wearing his camel uh, hair shirt, but it was more like a vest, like in the style of a, of a Western vest that they may have wore back in the 1800s. And he had two holsters on his shoulder with guns. And the caption said, John the Southern Baptist. <laughs> so you get kind of an idea, of, you know, although the John we know and read about today is not quite like that, but he, he still was a very eccentric character. But whether it was him shouting and, 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 and talking about that and, and, and proclaiming about, about the coming of Jesus or again those quiet, more serene encounters that the angels had with Mary, the shepherds and the wise men, they were all asking those people to do things to take them out of their comfort zone. 
As we continue in the second week in Advent, in this journey that we are on right now, as I've said before, we are in a time like none other. A year ago, did any of us dream that we'd be sitting here in a, in a, in a sanctuary like we are, with again the pews marked off, with many of us wearing face masks, with sanitizer stations placed at the front and even here in the back of the church for our safety, and that we'd be taking communion in a little different way that we probably haven't taken it before. These are things that we've had to do this year. There's been a lot that has been thrown at us, a lot of information, a lot of things since the very beginning of this pandemic. And some of it's been quite confusing. In the opening months of this pandemic, in the beginning, you know, we were told, oh, don't worry, don't wear masks because we need to reserve them for our medical personnel. They need to have them. Masks don't do you much good. And yet that message changed over time. And and it was more, well, now we need to, we should be wearing masks. We should wear some sort of covering over our face. And we should only when we're inside, but now in some places they're asking people to wear masks all the time. We've been asked to stay at least six feet apart from one another when we gather. We've been asked to limit the number of people who can gather with us at any given time. And we've been asked to stay home for the holidays. Even if that means having to spend Christmas, Thanksgiving alone, that we've been asked all in the name of safety to stay home. For many of of us, these things have been things that have been uncomfortable for many of us to do. And I get it and I know, I know what it's like, you know, wearing a mask, going into the store. The one thing I'm most uncomfortable about wearing a mask is when I go into a store, not having the ability to smile at other people. As I said before, seeing other people who might be kind of having a difficult day, just trying to smile at them, but there's no way you can really show them your smile. For some of us, it means uh, having the added difficulty of breathing. Or more importantly, when we're asked to stay away from one another, for many, many of our seniors, many people who live alone, that means spending a lonely time right now during these weeks between Thanksgiving and Christmas and the New Year. For many people who who are ill or have been hospitalized, and we know very well the heartbreak of those who have suffered from COVID, unable to be with family and friends. Just this past week, you know, I, 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 I visited with one of our more beloved members of the community in this church through a Zoom call because I was unable to be with her at the hospital. These are just some difficult things that we have been asked and made to do. But here's the thing we need to remember. Despite how uncomfortable wearing the mask, despite how how unnatural it may seem to have to stay apart from one another or to stay home in the best interest of keeping our loved ones safe, as hard as that be, know this, that this pandemic, that this wearing of masks and this staying apart as a community will not last. This pandemic will not have the final say. The writer of Mark reminds us of that today about, in the, and again, those words of Jesus' birth. But also, the reading that we heard also from Second Peter. In that reading in Second Peter, the, the author of that, of that book was expecting to pass away at some point after writing this letter. And so as a way to kind of give comfort to the audience that the writer uh, writes to, he says again, Do not ignore the one fact, beloved, that with the Lord, one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, 
but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. You see, the, 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 the writer was trying to convey that, you know, the Lord is patient. And time to God is not the same thing to us. For God, a thousand years can be like a day. Or a day can be like a thousand years to God. Because whether we know it or not, time to God is not the same thing as it is to us. For God is a God who looks at time, but looks at you and I, and looks what happens in our lives, and looks upon those times of joy. Maybe when we were baptized or we were confirmed. Maybe when, 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 when we spent in the, you know, and made a covenant to, to, to our, our, our spouse in our marriage, in our wedding. Maybe the birth of a child, whatever the, the occasion may be, God looks at that, and I can only imagine those of us who have instant replay on our TVs, to God, that's, that's kind of what the world is like, to God who rejoices in those moments in our life of joy and, 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 and takes the time to, to, just, to just be in the moment, to be happy for us. But conversely, I am convinced that, that God also fills our grief fills our, 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 the, 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 the powerlessness and understands that we may feel, especially in the face of this pandemic. And God's heart, heart breaks all the same with us when our hearts break. But needless to say, the writer was trying to say, regardless of what time may seem like to us, and I understand this year, if there's any year that, that seems like it's been a thousand years, it's this year, the writer reminds us that God wants no one to perish. That God is a God of patience and watches over all of us. And as I said, this pandemic will not have the final say. It will not have the final say in this world despite the hardship, despite all of the things that you and I have been asked to do that's uncomfortable and for many of us things we don't want to do, but in the name of safety, we still do it. Understand that the season of Advent is kind of the same thing. It's a time of preparation, but it's Advent is a time of learning and hearing those stories again of those who the angels that came to and appeared and asked them, to be brought out of their comfort zone. Whether it's masking up or having to stay apart from one another, or it's other things that God, God calls us to act in faith on, that we aren't always comfortable. Know that we are not alone. God has been doing this over and over throughout history. But it's up to us to have that courage, to make that decision, to take those steps, what we are being asked to do. But know that in taking those steps and responding to God, what God wants us and desires for us to do, know that we are taking that path to total joy, but most importantly, to total love and mercy that is made known to us in Jesus Christ. You don't have to wear the mask forever. We will come to a time where we can take our masks off and freely know that we don't have to worry about infecting others or being infected ourselves, that we will be able to gather in closer community, that our families will be able to gather with one another. But again, that, that will not have the final say. God's love, God's light, God's compassion and mercy is what has the final say. And it's the weird characters like John the Baptist, uh, honey-covered locusts and all, who brings us and reminds us of that message, that there is a greater one even coming who will be here, who will guide us and will show us what true love is all about. And it is his coming 
that we continue to prepare in this season of Advent. Amen. I'd invite you to open to the front of your hymnals to page 13. And I'd invite you to uh, join with me in the words of the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets who looked for that day when justice shall roll down like waters and righteousness with like an ever-flowing water. When nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whom you've sent in the fullness of time to be light to the nations. You put down the mighty from their thrones and exalt those of low degree. You fill the hungry with good things and the rich you may send empty away. Your own son came among us as a servant to be Emmanuel, your presence with us. He humbled himself in the obedience to your will and freely accepted death on a cross. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night that he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread blessed it and broke it, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after the supper had ended, he took the cup and said, This cup is the cup of the new covenant poured in my blood for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Well, as you can see, communion will be a little different this morning. As you come forward, as you feel led, there are a number of these little individualized cups of juice with a little wafer sealed at the top. Now, as you come forward, the best way I can say to open these is just grab the plastic on the top at the tab. You can kind of see there's a little tab there. If you kind of grab the plastic there, 
you should be able to pull up the plastic and then you can get to the wafer, which is just this tiny little wafer. The best way then to get to the juice is once you've pulled up the plastic, there's a silver top to the top. Again, at the tip of the tab, just very carefully, if you can, grab that tip and peel back the foil. Now, we did have a few who, who had a little, little difficulty, but if you work on it, I think you should be able to get it. But you basically then just pull back the foil and that should then expose the, uh, so that you can get to the juice. Now, you can take communion one of two different ways. You can come forward and take the cup, and you may certainly kneel here at the railing at any place and partake in the elements, or you can take the cup and wafer if you're more comfortable and take it back with you to your seat, or just stand here simply and partake in the elements as you stand. There is, of course, the sanitizing station here, and there is a trash can for you to dispose of your empty cups uh, once you are finished um, uh, with that. So again, as you are led, I invite you now to come forward and receive these gifts of bread and wine. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Come now and receive these gifts. body and blood of Christ is given for you. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit, 
to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Those of you who are able, I invite you to please stand. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Go forth into the world knowing that our God is a God of love, of joy, and light, who, as, as the writer in Second Peter reminds us, wants none of us to perish. Go in the expected hope that we await in the coming of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, let us join in singing our closing hymn this morning, number 220. <laughs>